Coach, you had a couple guys out today uh, uh, just without pads, just giving them a rest. Yeah, usually the guys that uh, we don't have practice after about six days a year are some of the older veterans, you know, guys like Linda Fletcher, Daniels, Phillips, with Fortis, uh, Johnson, Santana Moss, Galloway. Yeah, some of them uh, injuries from last year. The guys have been injured and we feel like after six days maybe we're pushing them up a little bit. We try to give them a little bit of break. You know, they still go through some drill work early, some walkthroughs. They're out on the field, but they don't go through all the team reps. And it gives uh, some of these younger players too an opportunity to see what they can do against some of the other players. So, you know, I've done that throughout my career with the older players. And it seems to protect them a little bit. Mike, John Beck just got here. How long do you take to fairly evaluate how he's going to fit in your system? Yeah, it's going to take a while. But uh, you know, John is very sharp. Uh, he took some reps today in our seven-on-seven in our team. So he's picking up the offense uh, very quickly, even though the terminology is completely different from what he used in the past. But uh, I'd be surprised if it takes him uh, a long time. Mike, um, Jamal Brown wasn't one of those veterans that came out with pads. He said that it was a slight hip strain. He was feeling some stiffness and soreness in the hip where he had surgery. Is that cause for concern this early, or is it just caution to hold him out now and make sure he doesn't aggravate it. Well, you know, we check everything out. So we, you know, came an MRI yesterday just to make sure and he's fine. And, you know, doctors say that's typical. You know, after a guy has been injured, uh, he is going to be a little bit sore. He wanted to go today and I just thought it was best for him going through what type of uh, surgery he had last year, the type of injury that he had to uh, take a day's rest. But he was wanting to go. So he'll be out there tomorrow ready to go and hopefully, you know, no setback, but uh, it's always going to be a little bit sore. Like Jeremy Jarman's coming off a big injury and he switched positions and switched back again up and down on the weight. Is it fair to really see where he is right now or is he still kind of ginger of that? Well, he's one of the guys that we got to keep an eye on too. Anytime a guy misses a year and he's gained some weight and playing a position, and there's a fine line there. You want to give him a day off, but at the same time, you want to give him as much exposure as you can because he hasn't played for a while. So we will do this in different uh, segments with different players. Uh, like I said, sometimes it's injuries from a year ago, other times it's age. But I think you got to be ca uh, careful once you get to the sixth, seventh day of camp, especially when you're catching. How's Jeremy look? Good. He's done a good job. He's making some strides. Coach, when you were at Denver and LJ was at KC, were there times you watched LJ's warning style and thought that he might fit what I like to do, or is this something you had to see out here in your actual system? Well, Larry, you can see that when he was at Kansas City, he ran his own blocking scheme, and he ran it extremely well. I had him in the Pro Bowl, too, and you can see what a downhill runner he was and what type of talent he had. So I'm very familiar with Larry you know, being in the AFC West for the first many years that I've been there and watching him for the first time. Did you meet with the commissioner today before practice? You know, I'm not sure what time he's coming in. I know he's going to meet with our team at 3 o'clock, and if he comes in early enough, I mean, uh, Obviously, my game plan is spend some time with But nothing scheduled to talk about Dr. Galea or anything like that? <laughs> what do you think about the job Roger Goodell has done and the way he's kind of laid his line with this league in the last few years? Well, I'll be honest with you. When I, I've gotten the chance to, to know the commissioner, being an assistant coach, uh, or really being uh, a head coach and being a coordinator, and you kind of watch a guy that under, understands all aspects of the league. I mean, he, he kind of grew, grew up doing the grunt work. And, and to me, uh, he spends a lot of time knowing all different areas. And I, I commend him for it. Because there's so many people that get to that level and they just know maybe dealing with television, maybe just dealing with the uh, owners. But he deals in, if you call him up and you're a head football coach, he takes your call every time. He's never too busy. And that's a very unique situation to have with a commissioner. Is that a job you think you ever want to have yourself? Mike, oh, no, no, you don't, don't envy him? No, 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 I don't envy him. <laughs> Stop not being a coach. I don't surely when I want to be the commissioner. What about Fred Davis' skills make him a good fit for our system? Well, I think Fred Davis is a good fit for any system. You know, he's a great athlete. Uh, he can block, he can catch. Uh, he's been working extremely hard since I've been here and got a big upside. And I look uh, for him to have a great future. Danny's making the skill the loudest. Special teams coach, like, you know, do you just let him do his thing, or do you have you uh, 
Well, first of all, you, you've got to go to different camps because every camp, every special teams coach is exactly the same way. <laughs> They're all the same. But Danny does a great job <coughs> coaching our special teams. And you got to have that enthusiasm. You have to have that mindset because you're having people looking to play offense or defense. And, you know, they're one or two plays away being the first team. If they're second team or third team, every, every one of those guys will want to be a starter. Yet they got to help you on special teams. So uh, you've got to have a unique coach that uh, has a lot of enthusiasm and really understands his position. So because of the experience, you basically let him do sort of his own thing, so to speak, or is that how, how involved are you with Involved with everything. That's how you keep your job as a head football coach. Offense, defense, special team. That's how you keep your job in the league. And whatever you run, you're responsible. <laughs> So, but he has done a good job. He's got a good resume, and uh, everything he's done is things that I've liked and things that I've supported. Mike, um, with the commissioner coming here, um, kind of curious uh, of all the issues facing the league mm -hmm. and facing him. What are you most passionate about as far as the future of the NFL and what he has to kind of deal with? Well, to be honest with you, you know, there's so many different things. You know, right now we're talking about getting an agreement. Hopefully, that gets done. You know, there's a lot of talk. There's uh, you know two sides of every story and the one thing I like is he, he likes to communicate with people. You know, he's going to come here to talk to the players. I'm sure he's looking at uh, looking at it from their perspective. You know, it's here from my perspective, the owner's perspective. So he's a guy that really uh, goes out of his way to uh, get everybody's opinion and I'll be surprised if you don't solve the problem. Mike, um, Darrell Young had a pass-catching touchdown in the goal line work. It's fair to say that the fullback position, presumably Mike Sellers, can be a big part of the passing offense as you guys evolve as an offensive unit? Well, you know, we think every position is very important. Uh, and if you got a, a great talent, you can even try to utilize that talent. <coughs> Full back, if you're in the two-back set, you should be able to catch some you know, touchdown passes. And it's a vital part of your offensive system. Like, do you and feel... Like you saw today on the goal line, the fullback has an opportunity to catch the ball. Sorry about that. Do, do you feel as though you're... A, especially ahead or behind anywhere yet in camp? You know, it's a grind. Anytime you go going through camp, you know, all of a sudden the defense has a good day and you feel like you're ahead on defense, and then the offense has a good day, and now you feel like you're behind on defense. So you can't win until you go against, uh, you know, the phone. But, you know, that's what camp's all about, you know, trying to get through your installation, trying to stay fairly healthy, not lose guys for the season, but at the same time keep on getting better. Hey Mike, yeah. Dan Snyder said the team is moving closer toward having an indoor practice facility. Is that something you've talked to him about? Is that something you would want? Well, it'd be great. You know, anytime you have, you know, if you have a foot of snow or you have a lot of water, you know, there is no place to practice. So you'd like to, in the middle of the week during the season, all of a sudden we've got a situation where you can't go outside and how do you get ready for a game? So that'd be that'd be the ideal situation. Mike, you've got uh, Andre and uh, Lorenzo and a couple of other guys moving defensive end, standing up, playing linebacker. Can you talk a little bit about how their progress, how they're doing at that transition? Well, the two guys you just mentioned are, are doing fantastic. You know, they're big guys, and very strong, very athletic. Um, how you like to be a running back, blocking guys that size, you know, 265 to 280 pounds. And you got a back that's uh, real strong at 230, and they just run right over them. And that's one of the advantages running 3-4 uh, defense and having those big outside linebackers. You know, Brian uh, Rapko is not quite as, as big, uh, but unlike him to block him as a running back. So those are some of the advantages that we're looking for in some of the matchups this season. What do you like from Bartell to keep him around? Well, like I said, if you're part of our 80, uh, there's a good reason that you're here. you got an opportunity to make this football team. First of all, he's, he's a smart kid, he's tall, he's got a good arm, uh, he's uh, very committed, he's been working his rear end off since he's been with us, and takes a lot of pride in what he does. He's been to a number of camps, he's seen, uh, been, been with a number of camps, different systems, so he's got a little experience there as well, so big upside for him. You don't have 80 right now, are you looking to add a, someone in the next couple of days? No, but uh, you know, we just didn't sign somebody, this time of year usually you know, lose a guy, Unless there's somebody that we really want, you know, we usually wait, see if there's an injury here or there. You just bring somebody in, and all of a sudden you lose somebody else, and you have a little bit more depth in one position. So right now we do have that extra spot, but we'll kind of wait and see, depending on who's helping us. 
Uh, Mike saw Albert hit the sled today. Is he? Is that a sign of progress? Well, you had to, you've been hitting the sled the last couple of days. Can't, can't believe you missed some of the practice out there. Talking to some of your superiors. <laughs> <laughs> Do you uh, expect you'll take the test tomorrow? I really don't know. I don't know, but uh, you know, the knee's still getting a lot of treatment. He's in here early, been treatment three times a day. He's gotten a lot of work on that treadmill, so uh, hopefully he passes in the near future. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Mike. Thanks,